Hello everybody and happy Friday and welcome to the Woodland Chronicles week 34. Now Tim is still off this week so once again he's asked me to step in and share a video with you this morning and of course as always I'm honoured to be here. And I thought I'd bring you out today with me on a little hike to the beautiful beautiful new forest I'm just outside the little village of Burley and it's absolutely gorgeous here as I'm sure you can see. I hope you can hear all the birds singing around me as well. I wanted to talk today a little bit about self-awareness. It's something that I've covered in quite a lot of my videos before, just like in passing, you just like mention it, and we've mentioned it in workshops, both Tim and I as well. Um, but I've really never talked about it a bit more in depth. So I thought it was a good subject for today, because I think this is something that is so critical to all of us on the ascension process. You know, essentially this whole process is about shedding and letting go of anything that doesn't serve us, anything that's lower vibration, and helping us step into a more heart-centered way of being. But really, you know, that's about, so that's about transformation, it's about transition from one state to another. But we can't change ourselves until we become aware of what needs to be changing. Um, so it's really critical that we are able to kind of take a step back and look at ourselves, look at the patterns of our lives, and then make active conscious choices to change those. I wanted to share a short story with you today. This is something that I heard quite a number of years ago now, but it's always stuck with me. And it's a story from the wonderful Dr. Wayne Dyer, who sadly isn't with us before. Um, but there are videos of this on YouTube, which is where I saw, I saw it. And I'll share the link to that below in case you want to check it out. But I'm just going to read you the story that he told. And this was actually a friend of his told it to him, who sadly apparently has also passed now. Um, but she was at some kind of seminar. And what they were asked to do was write on these small cards their life in five chapters. Um, and it was such a beautiful story. It moved him to say it at the workshop that he was at, and it's, it's moved me ever since, and I wanted to share it with you today. So this is what this lady said. Chapter one of my life. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault and it takes me forever to find my way out. Chapter two of my life. I walk down the same street and there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again and I can't believe I'm in the same place, but it isn't my fault and it still takes me a long time to get out. Chapter three of my life. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it, but I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open and I know where I am. It's my own fault and I get out immediately. Chapter four of my life. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five of my life, I walk down a different street. And I've always absolutely loved this story. It's always resonated with me. And really it's a perfect description of the process of changing. You know, I've talked about this in the past, and I think Tim and I talked about this a little bit in our Q and A that we did recently for the Ascension Toolkit um, about change and the process that you go through in order to do that and with challenges and initiations that's what we were talking about and i was saying how it's okay to fail an initiation you know these things come to us they're challenges in our lives you know because there are opportunities to grow right so say for instance i've got a block to speaking my truth and because I have this self-awareness, which is the first step, I ask the angels to help me overcome that block to speaking my truth. The universe will give me initiations, the challenges, opportunities to face that challenge and see whether I overcome it. And when we do, that allows us to clear 
blocks basically from our energetic systems clear things like karma knots and and stuff like that things that may have been imprinted on us for a number of lifetimes that we've been carrying ever since until we were over able to overcome that challenge and that's the initiation and in the five chapters of the life that that's kind of the final step you know chapter four you walk down the same um same street there's a deep hole you walk around it that's seeing the issue right there and avoiding it but then chapter five that i love so much i'll walk down a different street is where you've completely changed your patterns and you've gone in a completely different direction and you know within our lives there's certain things certain kind of pre-programmed things certain things with the energy of the planet with astrology that will force us to face certain challenges at certain times. So maybe you don't always require the self-awareness to kind of call in the angels or whoever it is that you work with to help you with that. Um, sometimes these things do just happen. But if you see a pattern within your life, if you have been walking down the same street and falling in the same hole over and over again, it can be impossible to change that pattern until you can see it. And that is why self-awareness is so important. And, you know, to be truly self-aware involves us being a little bit critical of ourselves. And that may seem a bit counterintuitive to self-love, where we, you know, we're supposed to love ourselves conditionally and accept ourselves for, for who we are. And I guess there is a little bit of conflict there. But I guess the truth in it is that you can see yourself, you can accept yourself for who you are, but you can still see those faults and you can say, you know what, I want to be better. And making that decision to want to change is, is a massive one, absolutely massive. I, I channeled a message um, probably a couple of years ago now, it was for my activating the Christ light within message from Claire, the Elohim of Purity. And this has always stuck in my mind and I quote it quite a lot. And I can't remember the exact phrasing, but she basically says that change does not come at the point of when you do something different. Change happens when you make the decision with unified by the heart and the mind to change your life. That is the point that change happens. And we can see this because there's, you know, how many people out there say that what that they want to stop smoking? And they, they say they're gonna do it over and over again. And it might not be till 10 years later that they finally actually make the commitment with the heart and the mind and actually do that. And that is the moment that their life has changed. Yes, it might take them a month, three months, six months to, to fully stop smoking, but they have already changed because they made that commitment. Um, but again, that comes back to self-awareness because they had to see that that habit wasn't healthy for them in the first place and have a desire to change it. And, you know, there's kind of a couple of sides to spirituality, really, because there is obviously, you know, getting to connect with higher beings and meditation and the beautiful high energy light work. The other side that kind of runs parallel with that is is the path to ascension, because throughout doing the spiritual work, calling in these energies, we're calling light into our systems and that instantly illuminates the shadows within us and it pushes out the lower vibrations that we don't want to carry. So you can't really do one without the other. And so the ascension side of things, it's, it's kind of like just a different way of doing self-help. You know, you could go into a bookstore and go to the self-help section and look at all of the books there and it will have kind of a, a fundamental in psychology we're kind of doing a very, very similar process, but the fundamentals are based in spirituality instead. Um, but self-awareness, of course, is a fundamental part of psychology. So I guess the two kind of go hand in hand. And I'm just kind of thinking about this process out loud, really, as, we, as I'm talking about this. But it all starts with self-awareness. You know, you would never walk into the bookshop and look for a book on self-care or self-help if you weren't aware that there was a problem in the first place. So really, it is a critically important thing. 
And how do we do that? Well, really, it's as simple as taking a step back and looking at ourselves objectively. Um, perhaps looking at ourselves the way that others might see us. And moving the ego out of the way. So coming back into your heart before you do it, I guess is an important way of doing it. Because our ego will often, you know, block us from accepting that there's anything wrong with us because it wants us to remain confident or whatever. But recognizing a pattern within you that's is I don't want to say not perfect because you are perfect. Every single one of you is perfect. But you know, let's should we say a pattern that's not in alignment with your highest self. Recognizing that, you know, that's not something to be ashamed of at all. That's something well, we all have it, quite frankly. We all have things that aren't perfect. We each one of us is a cooking pot of a million different things, whether it's like past life energy, ancestral energy, events that have happened in our lives, in our childhood, um, the energies that are around us each and every day. And growing up in the environment that we have done in 3D, quite frankly, none of us don't have baggage, for want of a better word. If we did, we'd all be walking on water by now. That's where we're trying to get to, right? trying to release all of this stuff. So being able to recognize it is an amazing thing because it leads us on the path to clearing it. And, you know, if you want to overcome something that you see within yourself, as I say, it can be as simple as asking the angels or whoever you wish for help in overcoming that. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you're probably aware of my series, The Path to Freedom. I've been running for the past three months. And uh, this is an ongoing six-month series where we're working to clear the biggest blocks that you might face in your life. Things like speaking your truth, self-love, abundance, relationships, all of this kind of stuff that's so common to so many people. And we start off every single one of those workshops with a petition to the Intergalactic Council and the Board of Karma. Um, asking them to release to or allow us to release anything that may be preventing us from overcoming these blocks whether it's past life trauma or something from this life or perhaps a contract that we've assigned um, for instance the abundance thing um, so many of us in past lives because we've led many lives of service may have signed vows of poverty and that is a contract that you make and it can be very challenging to overcome those blocks to abundance until you clear those contracts. So we petitioned the Board of Council, uh, sorry, the Board of Karma and the Intergalactic Council for permission to dissolve these contracts and overcome these blocks. And that can be a really, really powerful thing once you've got the self-awareness of an issue that you can ask them for anything that you want. Now, it's not guaranteed that they will give it to you because it could be critical to your soul path that maybe you, you have those blocks at least for the minute or maybe you're going to overcome them at a major life event down the, down the road. Maybe you just need to raise your vibration a little bit higher before you're allowed to do that. For whatever reason, you, know, you can't guarantee that they are going to let you off with lifetimes of karma, um, just like that, you know but you can ask, and that is a great place to start. So if you're aware of these issues, they are great people to talk to. Of course, as I say, the angels as well. So I've rambled around my topic a little bit this morning, but that's the way these things go. Self-awareness. It's just about being able to take a step back and look at ourselves critically, but most importantly, lovingly, because that's what you deserve. But just being able to see a pattern within ourselves, letting go of the ego whilst we do it, accepting it for what it is, and making a decision to consciously overcome that. And when you do that, do that from the heart and the mind, as I say, and that change will stick. I hope that helps some of you this morning. And thank you so much for joining me out here. Um, a quick shout out, my workshop tonight, An Opportunity for Peace. I spoke about a little bit more in my video on Monday for Tim, um, where we're just going to come back to centre. We're going to spend some time balancing and healing. 
and just bring in lots and lots of love and peace just to help calm things down after such a crazy period we've had of late i will pop the link to that in the description below in case you fancy finding out a bit more information or booking a place uh, also if you've enjoyed this video as well i will share my link tree down below which includes links to all my social channels so you can follow me on there if you wish to i post videos every week on facebook youtube and instagram thank you so much for joining me here this morning a pleasure as always and i hope whatever you're doing you have a beautiful day sending you all so much love bye bye